Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop out here in the heavenly backyard garden. Uh, you know, among all the daylilies and dahlias and other flowers that I can grow out here, there's one flower I just cannot grow. <laughs> Those are tulips. Uh, tulips just will not grow in this climate. It's too hot. They don't get cold enough uh, grounds during the winter for the tulips to bloom. However, up in the sky, there is a big tulip about 6,000 light years away from us. It's called the Tulip Nebula or Sharpless 101. And this is an emission nebula. And within this area of Cygnus, the swan, uh, there is a black hole called Cygnus X1. Now, I, I photographed this region uh, before and I wanted to get this bow shock that's associated with the outflow of the uh, gases, I suppose, uh, and the forces from that black hole. And that black hole, by the way, is about 20 times larger than our sun, uh, mass-wise. <laughs> Space-wise, it's not that big at all. But anyway, I wanted to see if I could bring out this bow shock. So one of the things I'm going to be doing is shooting this in narrow band. And I'm going to be using the oxygen-3 the sulfur-2 and the hydrogen alpha filters. I'm more concerned with the oxygen-3 because that is where the blue light uh, in the spectrum is located and uh, this bow shock is in that blue spectrum. So I'm going to uh, look at the blue of the, of the uh, oxygen-3. Now the camera that I'm using is the uh, ZWO ASI 1600. Yeah, I know this is getting pretty old, but I haven't been able to get up to that uh, 2600 yet or the Player One uh, monochrome camera, but I'm working on that. But for right now, I still have the 1600 monochrome camera. Uh, I've cooled it down. Uh, I'll be cooling it down, and I cooled it down last night uh, to minus 10 degrees Celsius. So I was getting some good imagery. Now for the hydrogen alpha, I got about two hours of data, two and a half hours. For the sulfur two, I have again about two and a half hours of data. But on the oxygen three, I went way overboard on that because I want to get that oxygen. And I have seven and a half hours, oh actually a little bit more than that, seven hours and 40 minutes worth of data in the oxygen three spectrum and all my subframes were five minutes long. So with that being said, let's take a look at some tulips or at least the tulip nebula right here in the Heavenly Backyard Garden. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. All right, for the first thing I want to do is go into Pix and Sight and uh, the way I work this out, you have to load in the new version of Site. I believe that's 18.9-2. Also, there is a new script that's available from Bill Blanchum and Mike Cranfield. And uh, there you can find it on the YouTube uh, page. Now, uh, I, I'll put a link to this into my description area below. Also, uh, the uh, YouTube YouTuber... Um, Dark Ranger Inc. has a fantastic video on how to set this up. This is the new narrow band normalization script program. Actually, it's no longer in scripts. It's, uh, it's in the um, processes now. But anyway, go to Dark Ranger's website to learn how to load this in and how to work it. It's really, really good. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you that right now. So let's get into the uh, information. And first of all, here's the alpha, uh, hydrogen alpha information. And instead of two hours and 30 minutes, I've added another hour to that. So I now have three hours and 30 minutes of hydrogen alpha. There you can see the tulip nebula right in this region here. And the black hole is down here. You can barely see that bow shock over here. So let's look at the sulfur two. And I added more data to that as well. Instead of two and a half hours, I now have four hours and 55 minutes, let's say five hours of uh, uh, sulfur two, which is in the red light. The uh, hydrogen alpha is more of the reddish orange light. But there you can see the tulip uh, nebula, but not much of that bow shock at all. Uh, again, there's the black hole. The bow shock is somewhere over into here. So let's take a look at the oxygen three data. And there it is there. And you can see that bow, bow shock a little bit more prevalent over here now uh, showing up. And of course, there's the Tulip Nebula and lots of other uh, really you know, interesting nebulosity off to the left and, extreme, and extending off to the right. But there you can really see that, that bow shock uh, taking shape. Now, 
The next thing I want to do is uh, channel combine these three elements uh, into a RGB picture. And uh, to do that, of course, I star aligned them already and they're already registered. So when I combine the three together into the SHO, I got this right here. Uh, that's the uh, SHO, the sulfur, hydrogen alpha, and the oxygen three. And uh, the next thing I did is I eliminated the stars. Uh, it's important that you eliminate the stars before you go into this normalization process. And there's the uh, regular uh, SHO with no stars. So I'm going to minimize this one here because I don't need it. And I'm going to go into the new uh, narrow band normalization script and uh, process. And uh, since I did an SHO, I'm going to choose the palette as SHO because that's, that's what you need to do. I'm going to keep this to off the light, uh, the lightness and uh, everything else. Uh, let's just put it back into where it comes in as the default. The default is HOO, but I'm going to go SHO. And then I'm going to open up a preview window over here. And there's the preview. Now, watch what happens. Here's where the magic really starts off. And uh, first of all, uh, let's bring up the brightness a little bit right down here. And there you can see the brightness coming up and so forth. And you got some really, really neat information showing up already. And uh, in the SHO, there's that bow shock right there showing up a little bit more vividly. And uh, let's look at the, um, the SCNR. Uh, you can eliminate some of that green from the hydrogen alpha and look at that. I mean, this is in preview. Uh, it's, it's really, really interesting. Uh, now I can boost the oxygen See there, you know, more blue coming out in there. And I can even boost the, um, the sulfur. Get more sulfur and so forth. Now I got these other uh, channels here where I can preserve. It's kind of like using the, uh, the luminance uh, factor here and using it like HA as your luminance. You can do that and that's what it does there. Or I can use the O3 as your luminance. Uh, doesn't do much, well I gotta hit it, O3. And you can see that really it takes a make different look. And of course, the S2, that's a totally different look as well. But I, I just like just keep it off. And it does what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this bow shock here. And I can also um, change the uh, uh, highlight reduction. I can reduce more of the highlight. I get less information there, but more uh, detail supposedly. Uh, or I can bring it back up to the highlights and uh, emphasize that even more. Uh, so, yeah, and, and the shadow points, you can play with those. You can play with all these um, uh, values uh, right here in the preview window. And then when you're ready to uh, get what you want, and let's just say, um, well, let's just play around with the SCNR a little bit more. You know, you, you want to keep some of that green in there. If I take out all the green, that's what you get right there. But let's put in a little bit of that green. And... Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to save that. Just uh, hit the execute. And, and the, of course, now that's the preview on the preview. You don't want that. But there's your final product there. Now, if you want to, you can go over and take the uh, stars, the stars I saved from the um, extraction. And I can add them back in through easily Pixel Max. Pixel, pixel Math, not Max, pi Pixel Math. And I got the stars and SHO uh, one nebulosity right here. Uh, let's just execute this little guy here. And there you have it right there. And there's your final image uh, if you want it, um, which is interesting. I mean, look at all the details in that uh, that you have available there. And uh, there is that bow shock right there. The black hole is somewhere in this vicinity around this star here. I think this star is orbiting the black hole. And uh, the uh, emission energy coming off that is forming this bow shock. But let's take a look at this in the um, sulfur, I mean, in the uh, uh, HOO palette, the uh, hydrogen, uh, oxygen three, oxygen three. And um, I did that. Let's put this over here, uh, right here. And there's the HOO palette. Now, you know, a lot of times when you do an HOO, it does give you this red color uh, because the hydrogen, which is usually dominant, is, is in the red color. 
Uh, but I wanted to uh, go into this new uh, process with the uh, narrow, band, narrow band normalization and then select HOO right over here and then open up the uh, preview. And it's going to look totally different. I mean, and this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the blue light of the oxygen three. And look at that. Look at all that. Now, one of the things you're not supposed to do is do this with the stars. Um, so you're supposed to have the stars e eliminated all the way uh, uh, before you, you go through this process. So I'm going to, I'm going to um, minimize this and open up the one I already took the stars out. All right, there, now we can uh, open up the um, window. And there you can see that bow shock right there. Now we play with this again, just like we did. Now, in the HOO uh, process, you do have a new uh, selection to play with. Uh, the um, uh, synthetic green blend and uh, you have model one model two interesting and model three and there's a description for all of this um, let's go back to model one uh, and you can play with the um, blending amounts and so forth um, well that really pulls out that bow shock there but let's see over here yeah that's that's overkill um, you want know, to get kind of like in the middle. And if you click on the uh, little tab down here, browse documentation, just click on that. And you get all this information about the narrow band normalization program uh, that was written uh, by these two guys, um, Bill Blanchard, Blanchum, Bill Blanchum and Mike Cranefield uh, wrote this program for Pixinsight. So, you know, Great information, but anyway, let's to um, um, let's let's play around with this a little bit more. Let's bring the brightness back up a little bit, and because I, I want to highlight this bow shock here, and uh, there's no SSI or S2 boost because there's no S2, but I can boost the uh, oxygen a little bit more. That's overkill because uh, I'm blowing out the whites over there in the tulip itself. All okay. right. And uh, that's an interesting view right, right in itself. Let's take a look at these other uh, preserve. Uh, let's say H alpha as the um, luminance and the uh, O3 as the luminance. Yeah, that doesn't look good at all. Again, I, I prefer just to leave it off. And now if you, if you, you can play with this just for fun, but there's the uh, SHO kind of like a fake uh, SHO, H -O -H -S -O, uh, SHO, HO, and you got, you know, what's the other line over here? Um, HOS. Uh, you, know, you get some interesting results with just playing around, but let's just stick with the preferred method here, and that's the HOO, since that's what I'm using uh, in this particular example. So uh, there you have the image. Let's put the stars back in this just uh, to see what happens here. And uh, I got this image called, uh, well, that's the, um, I didn't execute it. I got to execute it, guys. Um, all right, let's execute it here. Okay, you know, that's a preview of the preview. You don't want that. But there's the, um, which I call the HOO clone. And let's add the stars into that. I just took 75% of the values of the star and just uh, added them back into the uh, picture. So this is HOO clone and hit execute here. There it is. All right. So let's zoom in on this just real quickly and take a peek. And um, yeah, that bow shock really shows up nicely in the HOO imagery. Again, there's the, uh, the black hole area right in there, Cygnus X1 and the uh, shock wave uh, that's um, generating this bow over in this region here. Meanwhile, the, uh, the Tulip Nebula itself is uh, looking pretty interesting, as you can see here. So, okay. Well, I hope you got some value out of this video. Uh, this is a wonderful telescope, the Orion Eon 130 triplet refractor. And it sits on this mount here, the uh, Skywatcher EQR6 Pro. And the tracking was uh, very good uh, over the last couple of nights. So I was very pleased with the results of this uh, setup here, this rig. Now, if you would like to help support my channel, uh, by all means, 
please help me uh, support my channel. Uh, you can always buy me a cup of coffee. You know me and I love my coffee. Or you could uh, join my Patreon page or uh, send a super thanks through uh, YouTube uh, on this video. And if you like the video, of course, hit the thumbs up and uh, like the video. And also, uh, if you haven't already subscribed, why not? Please subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of astrophotography out here in the heavenly backyard garden. I'm also shooting another video right at the same time uh, on the Celestron 11 inch telescope with the new StarSense Auto Guider. How is this Auto Guider working? Well, I got a video coming up. I'll be showing you just how well this new Auto Guider works with the Celestron systems. So with that being said, you know, remember the, the, the heavens are just filled with majestic wonders and they're all in a sky near you. So unless you need rain, clear skies everyone.